What's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, it's a new week. We're taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart. We'll peek over there at the Ethereum price chart and the altcoin market as well as we start this week off with a little bit of red action here in the cryptocurrency market. It's actually going to be a very big week in markets in general this week. Because this week, we're expecting to have a Federal Reserve interest rate hike and a lot of earnings coming out or quarterly earnings coming out for a lot of big companies such as Amazon, Google, Apple. So it's kind of been a highly anticipated week this week as it's been like a month and a half since we've had a Federal Reserve interest rate hike. We're supposed to get another one this week. Then we won't get another one until late September. So it's kind of this big break that's going to happen after this one that we're going to have almost two months between now and the next Federal Reserve meeting and interest rate hike. So the markets are really keeping their eye on what the Fed is going to do this week with a whole two months now between the next one. And as you guys know, we have had interest rate hikes both in June and in May. So here we go in July. So kind of every month, now we're going to go two months. And then at the same time, all eyes on earnings for companies this week. It's expected that earnings are going to be down for a lot of these major players, but how bad will they be? So this week is expected to be volatile just based on those events happening in themselves. And well, with crypto following the stock market, one would have to assume probably going to see some volatility over here in the crypto market as well. Looking at Bitcoin, though, we had our weekly candle close yesterday and oh my goodness, Come on, Bitcoin, not able to close on top of that 200 week moving average, putting a pretty decent sized wick here on the top side of this thing, about a $1,500 wick on the top side of it, not able to close, really kind of losing it here over the weekend, just barely dipping below it and still not able to close on the top side of it right in here. And as we can see today, starting off with quite a pullback. Now we could see from a candle close perspective, we're still sitting on top of these levels in here, but even that 50 day moving moving average, it's now getting poked underneath today. The daily candle hasn't closed, it's poking underneath it. Uh, these are not things that I would want to be seeing for like excitement in a breakout in Bitcoin. Just when I imagine, hey, you're getting through the 200 week moving average, you're getting through the 50 day moving average. Uh, this is not like signs of strength, like we saw happen over here with Ethereum that was really able to crank through both of them and get some momentum heading out of there. Uh, Bitcoin is just looking weaker. So, you know, when I look at something like this, I have to say to myself, okay, well, how does this typically behave in the past, right? Like if you're trying to fight back up against the 200 week moving average and you're trying to fight through the 50 day moving average at the same time, what has happened historically, right? Can we produce any type of odds and what happens? Like if we have this exact same situation happen and it's happened 10 times, what, how does it play out the majority of the time? Usually nothing is going to be a 100%, but is there, is there like a 70% outcome or a 65% outcome or something to give like kind of leading one way or the other? And the reality is we've never had a situation with Bitcoin like this before where it's been stuck underneath the 200 week moving average this long and trying to get back through it. The only thing we're seeing is that Bitcoin is definitely having a hard time getting back. So we have no reference points to go back to and say, hey, what do we do about this 200 week moving average when we get underneath it? How many times does it have to try to crank back through it before it can get through? We just don't have that data throughout all of Bitcoin's history to tell us. Because as we can see in here, we've never really been stuck underneath of it this long. And had it be such a resistance for us in here and, you know, closing all these weekly candles underneath, you can look over here just to see we, we haven't done it. So it's trying to take a look at it from different aspects to say, OK, well, either the 200 week is providing like massive resistance and Bitcoin is totally doomed or we can go back to look at how Bitcoin has acted previously to say, can it act like that again? What we do know is that Bitcoin is the most oversold it's been in history from the bottom of every bear market. So every time we've gone deep into a bear market for Bitcoin, when the bottom came in, Bitcoin was not as oversold as it is right now. So we're definitely swung in one major direction, right? So imagine the capitulations at the bottom of the previous bear markets. And I know not a lot of people were here during those moments, but you don't have people jumping and screaming like that they're buying the bottom like you do at the top. It's just not like that. People are screaming that they're waiting for one more dip, one more dip, and then we're good to go. But we know from this condition, well, hey, you know, we're ridiculously oversold. That's what's happened at the bottom each of each of these things. Looking over here at Bitcoin on how the last several months have played out, where there's been really no retracement coming in here. We've operated just like we did back here to pull all the way back down. We've had the exact same pull down happen here in Bitcoin. So from like the, a type of crashing structure that has no retracements in here, but has one pit stop like we had back in here back in February through April, 
we've behaved like a bottom has come in in here, but we've never had to fight underneath this 200 week moving average before. And for some reason, Bitcoin's having a hard time getting back above it. So not the greatest signs in the world to see Bitcoin failing to stay above that 200 week moving average with its first opportunity to really get above it. We spent four days on top of this thing and we got on top of that 50 day moving average, which we haven't done since back in April. And both of them getting through, not able to maintain them like Ethereum was. Ethereum was able to clearly get above them. You can see that here on the weekly candles right in here. The last two weeks, just two weeks ago, boom, a crack right back through that 200 week. Then another follow through here the week after that. And also really getting itself distance above that what, that 50 day moving average. But Bitcoin just not giving much strength at all. Now, you know, technically it's still here on top of these daily candle closes happening in here. You start coming down any lower, like we were talking about last week, you start getting down into these prices and you start kind of showing a rolling over kind of structure like you had back in here for another dip to come in. So we'll see how Bitcoin maintains throughout this. But I don't know, looking at that, just not very strong here for Bitcoin. Moving back over to Ethereum, we can see that Ethereum still stayed within this range that we were monitoring at the end of last week. We were talking about how, you know, the structure that we've seen coming in here for Ethereum is a lot like a bottoming structure that heads into a retracement. And that where we were at currently was a lot like the consolidation level underneath the breakdown level that eventually had to work its way through and then finally end up breaking out. And that late yesterday, it tried to get right back up there to the top, which almost appeared as if, you know, we're heading right back there to give it a shot. But we can see that with Bitcoin falling back below that 200 week moving average, breaking below that 50 day moving average, Ethereum's moved back as well. But it's still within the range, right? So for like a confluence between Bitcoin and a confluence between Ethereum, you would think that if Bitcoin kind of stepped lower and then if Ethereum also took out this range and got below like 1440, you'd kind of have the confluence between the both of them to say, whoa, wait a minute. We now have two things that are kind of showing that the market is kind of starting to slip right now. But still currently, crazy as it is, even with all that happening over there with Bitcoin, Ethereum still sits within that range right in there. So we'll see how that plays out in the coming days. But the thing that would get me definitively saying this range doesn't look good anymore is if you saw Ethereum get there below. 1445 and if you saw bitcoin dip down there below 20,700 you'd lose the range for ethereum and you'd lose really any bullish structure that i can envision here on bitcoin maybe it's something i don't see but from the things that i've seen throughout the past that's what everything is it's based on your own experiences and what you've seen if bitcoin starts dipping down in here and especially if it dips down below 20,700 mixed in with ethereum dipping below 1445 it would appear to me that we we've lost bullish recovery mode and you know it's one thing to just you know look for prices to reverse for the sake of being bullish or whatnot but you know my bigger perspective of it is i i see this happening in here right we've we've had all of this play out in here for bitcoin where the price level that we started this fall at in here based on how these have happened before look how deep we've gone in here right we've acted like what a completed fall can act like so now the question is can we show any type of recovery process in here that can look like a bottom can be coming in? In addition, the entire fall that has taken place here for Bitcoin has been back to the 786 Fibonacci retracement level. So we've retraced 78.6 of the entire move to the upside in here, which is a common retracement level to get back to. So if we're looking at it just from a Fib retracement level, well, it makes a lot of sense to find a support coming in here on the Fibonacci retracement level. But when we were talking last week, there were a couple of things that we were looking at. One, would Bitcoin be able to maintain above the 200 week moving average? And two, would it be able to maintain above the 50 day moving average? Both those circumstances, it was not. It failed both of them. However, the next thing was if Bitcoin dips down into these price levels, then it starts to really lose the bullish structure that it has going on there. It didn't do it. So that's still there. It hasn't dipped down deep enough yet. And Ethereum is still within this range. So nothing's broken there either yet. So hard to say any real definitive answers came from that. But what we do know, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, it's going to be a volatile week. So it seems like this week we will get answers simply because markets are likely to be incredibly volatile this week. I could not imagine markets not being volatile this week with what's happening and the anticipation of everybody waiting on this and the trading bots and algorithms have been waiting for it. And then on top of that, it's almost like time. It's like the next business day after the Federal Reserve interest rate hike is when we get the official Q2 GDP numbers, which would officially label the United States to be in a recession. So you have like all these earnings coming out, then you have the Federal Reserve interest rate hike, and then you have the GDP numbers coming out. So you have just bam, 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 
However, the market pretty much has an idea of what all these things are going to be. The big question is if there's going to be surprises that come out from any of it. And so really the news to start this week out is just to say Bitcoin was not able to get above that 200 week moving average. It was not able to stay above the 50 day moving average, but the prices haven't dipped below yet. And Ethereum is still within its range. So nothing crazy has happened yet, but we know there's going to be crazy this week. And which way will it go? And that's why I'm talking about these are the price levels where I'd be like, uh-oh, 1445 for Ethereum and 20,700 for Bitcoin. So those are the things that I'm watching right now. Disappointing to see Bitcoin unable to close above that 200 week moving average. You know, the majority of my portfolio isn't Bitcoin. It's not like I'm a Bitcoin maximalist in any way, but I know, you know, Bitcoin's pretty important for the market. So I wanted to see that happen. It's unfortunate it was not able to do it. That's kind of concerning there for Bitcoin, but we still see like price level wise. So those are like indicators, right? That's a 50 day moving average. That's a 200, 200 week moving average. Those are indicators, right? So the indicators, it failed on those, right? But from a price level, it's still okay. But we're going to keep this video pretty short today because those things could change, right? Price levels could change. And it's really, it's the rest of this week that's going to be the big doozy. It's going to be all the things happening throughout markets this coming week. Today is kind of the warm up of being like, all right, guys, are we ready? Because here it comes. It's going to get wild out there. And today's kind of lackluster, but it's not going to be like that the rest of the week. It's going to be high anticipation and probably highly volatile for the rest of this week. So we'll keep an eye on it throughout the week. I'll show you guys the things that I see out there. Otherwise, we'll wait and see how things go. But all right, that's going to be it to start this week. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick me up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers... Got your back. Have a good one.